Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we're going to show you what happens when we pupate our wasp broods that we collect in the field. Uh, we remove the paper that comes on the nest that the wasps have built, and we replace it by putting these combs into a bag, which simply simulates the paper that would have covered the nest anyway. And the nests will then pupate out a bunch more adult wasps, which can be collected for VIT. And we'll leave these out in nature. We'll put a little hole in the corner of the bag so the wasps can come and go as they please while they rebuild this nest. We'll also use cardboard boxes, plastic containers, what have you. And this system has been working great so far this season. What we didn't plan on was these little banditos coming to feast on our brood comb. So this video is going to show you what that looked like and what we had to do about it. September 6, 2023, we had a bunch of brood combs set up over here for incubation in various boxes. And as you can see, there's wasps in here building uh, different comb structures that we allow them to rebuild. What happened here is the raccoons came and destroyed a lot of the boxes filled with pupating wasp nests and they wreaked havoc over here. So what we're gonna have to do is trap the coons and we're gonna show you how we do that. We use live traps. We don't kill or hurt the raccoons. Uh, they're getting very, very active in neighborhoods and so forth. Regardless, all we do is we capture them and we take them down to public property by the river and we release them down there away from here. So uh, what we do first is we pull out a couple of live traps because we have at least two or three raccoons that are uh, wreaking havoc on our wasp brood incubation space. So we're going to use two traps today. And the best bait we've found for raccoons is marshmallows. They love them. They will eat marshmallows anytime you give them the chance. So what we're gonna do is throw a few marshmallows right into these live traps. And we're gonna set the traps out around the area that they've been foraging for our wasp brood. And that's been around this wooden chair and around the tables in the corner here near the fence line. And we'll set these traps up. And tonight we should capture some cones. And we'll show you that on a wildlife camera that we'll set up that has infrared because they usually come in the middle of the night or at least after dark. So you open up your traps and you take a handful of marshmallows, throw them all the way in the back. Make sure they're past the trip plate, the step plate that triggers the door, which will capture your live coon. Just make sure they're in the back so they have to walk across that step plate and trigger the trap in order to get to the marshmallows. And then you take a few more and you put them outside the trap and then you cover the trap in some brush and we'll show you what that looks like. The way these traps work is you set the trigger here on the door and as the coon walks in and hits this plate, it snaps the door down and they're trapped. You get your trap set up and you have your bait in the back of each trap. Then the next thing you do is you simply drop a couple of the marshmallows around the front of the trap area. And what you want to do is attract them toward where your traps are, but you don't want too many. You just want them to be aware that there's food here. And once they get a taste of those, they're going to see the others in the back. They have very good nocturnal vision, and they're going to go right in and eat those. 
we'll do is just grab some vegetation from anywhere. I'm gonna grab some branches off of this tree that we've just been cutting down here and we'll get some branches to cover your traps so that they don't look so much like a foreign object to them. They look more like a natural uh, brush pile or something. So we're just gonna grab a few of these, toss them in a pile. This is what we're gonna cover the traps with. So when you're all set, here's what you got. Just some brush covering the traps a little bit. Doesn't have to be crazy. Just enough to make it look a little bit more like a nature environment as opposed to just plain metal. And now we're gonna hope that the coons eat this bait one marshmallow at a time and then walk in. And hopefully that's how it'll work. They'll sniff around. They'll be looking for brood comb for wasps, but they'll find the marshmallows. They'll see more in back and they'll step right in and we'll capture them. September 7th, 2023. We're gonna check on our coon traps. It's about six in the morning before sunrise. Let's see if we captured anybody today. Well, sure enough, we got one customer, it looks like. All the bait on the ground is gone. Let's see who we have in this trap. The gate's down, that means somebody's in there. Well, hello. How are you? Got one little buddy in there. All right, we're gonna have to remove you and take you down to the river. What do you think about that? Okay. What we need to do is put a stick across the door so it doesn't pop open. Now we can take it over to the truck. Let's go, buddy. You ready? Let's go take you to the river. So there's our buddy. It's a young coon, very small little guy. Don't worry, sweetheart, we're going to take care of you. But it's pretty teeny. Looks a little afraid. All right, dude, you ready to take a ride to the river? Let's go. So there's a boat launch down here on a dark little country road. And that's where we're gonna drop off our little coon friend here. It's just a young coon. No reason to harm the animal, as long as you take it down to a public area, it's public land and you're not releasing it on someone's property, and then you're fine to relocate an animal like this. So that's what we're going to do. Looks like we got a trucker camping out down here today. So this is the river over here, you can't see it in the dark, but uh, this whole area is the river. 
Up here's the trucker taking off who'd been sleeping here. So we're gonna remove the safety stick and always have a wire connected to your release because you don't want to use your hand down here because as the animal comes out, it might panic and attack you, bite you. You don't want that. So what you want to do is release it with a wire. Stand behind the cage. Like this. All right, buddy. Come on. Let's go. Out you go. Come on, man. Come on. There you go. There you go. Okay. Take off. There you go. Okay. So now it ran down the riverbed. Done and done. All right. It's September 8th, 2023. Here we're going to see if we caught anybody else in our coon traps. Looks like we did. Got one here on the left side this time. Let's see who's here today. Hey, buddy. You taking a little nappy in there? Well, let's get you down to the river, huh? You've probably been in here for quite a while. Still got any action in you? Yeah, you're awake. You're awake. You're just waiting to get out of there, aren't you? All right. Let's take you down to the river. Pretty cute for a bandito. All right, we'll get you out of there. You hang tight. Let's go, dude. Time to head for the river. for the coons to go. They've got access to water if they're dehydrated and they can live out here just fine. All right, you ready, bud? So we reset the traps again, uh, just in case anybody else comes back. But we got the two that we think were the primary banditos eating up our wasp larva. So we've got two nests left, both vespula macula fronds. very active today because it's still pretty cold out. So just remember, marshmallows, they work every time. So 
So one note about safety around wild raccoons. You should check the area you've had coons and look for the scat. This is raccoon scat. They decided to come over near this wall foundation and leave their scat. Raccoon scat is extremely dangerous. It carries rat lungworm, raccoon roundworm, and it's transferred through the feces. Just breathing the dust around this feces can transfer the tiny microscopic eggs into your system. And rat lungworm and raccoon roundworm is a parasite that can travel into your brain and your organs and it can kill you. It cause severe neurological damage. So use a shovel, use gloves, use a dust mask if you're gonna go ahead and remove this feces. So remember, if you run into these guys, as cute as they are, they come with a whole host of issues. It's always best just to keep your distance from wild animals. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.